Hi everyone, I am Nils Pacheco and we are going to review about correlations in clinical research. Before we move to correlations, let's look at the big picture. So remember that correlations are used to mesh to compare two continuous variables. For example, imagine you are a researcher trying to understand how the brain changes with age. And the most common measure of brain volume is going to be brain parenchymal fraction. So you believe that brain parenchymal fraction decreases with age. So you perform a scatter plot, that is this graph that you can see in here. And you ask to yourself, are these values related? What is a correlation? A correlation is the degree to which two continuous variables are, are linearly related. Correlation can be can go from minus one to plus one, which is minus one a perfect negative and plus one a perfect positive. You need to keep in mind this word that is linearly, because linear is going to be really important in correlations. A correlation of zero means no linear relationship. And a perfect correlation means that if you know one variable, you perfectly know the other variable. So here you can see some examples of a positive and negative correlation and also of no correlation. Remember that you need to have a linear pattern because if you have a quadratic pattern or different patterns, that is not a correlation. How can we estimate a correlation? We uh, the first question you need to ask is what kind of data do you have? It if, it if it is normal distributed or no? If yes, you are going to have a Pearson correlation coefficient. If no, you can perform an Spearman correlation coefficient. A Pearson correlation coefficient uses normal data and because it includes the mean in the calculation, it can be very sensitive to outliers. We can formally test if the correl correlation coefficient is different than zero. So in these cases, we are gonna have the null hypothesis as the correlation coefficient being equal to zero. So let's look at some stata output like here. And you are gonna be interested in this case in BPF and age. So you are going to have three rows and the first row is the R coefficient which is the person correlation coefficient. The second one is going to be the p-value and the third one is going to be the number of observations. Now let's move to the Spearman correlation coefficient. In this case, in this case we use non-normal data so it's a non-parametric test and it uses the ranks of the data points which it it is similar to the Wilcoxon test. In this case, the rank correlation equal to zero is going to be the null hypothesis. In the case of this data output, it's going to be easier to understand, as you can see here. And uh, the Spearman row is going to be the coefficient and the probability is going to be the p-value. You need to keep in mind these concepts. First, correlation is not causation. Second, a statistical significant correlation is not the same as important meaningful correlation. For example, if you have a large sample and your correlation coefficient is 0 0.1, this can be a statistical significant, but this co coefficient is really small, so it's a weak correlation, which means that it can be not meaningful in your clinical practice. So a statistical significant does not mean important or meaningful. Thank you so much for listening to me. And if you want to learn more, you can review the fundamentals of biostatistics by Bernard Rosner, which is a great book for statistics. Thank you.